should name Casper's It Is Me keyword. Our hat just fell off because I'm so excited to talk about Avni Doshi's Burnt Sugar. And we are just going to get this out of the way. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Do I have to bloody say it one more time? It's 10 out of 10, it's pain out of 10. This book is by God incredible. This book is absolutely astonishing. So astonishing, you see this? Don't even want to hear of you. Don't even want to speak of you, Salman Rushdie. For a debut novel, I am just astounded with how Ari Doshi has managed to craft, no, not write the book, to craft this book. Burn Sugar, or by its original name, Girl in White Cotton, is just awe-inspiring. But before I digress and tell you how much I love it and how I've swooned for the past two days and been up at night uh, trying to grapple with this genius work, let's talk about what Burn Sugar is about, and simply, Burn Sugar is about Antara, whose mum, Tara, is having Alzheimer's and is struggling to remember her childhood, raising Antara, and all little nuances in life. The point of view of this story is entirely Antara's, and we see her struggle with caring for someone with Alzheimer's, and also struggling to convey to doctors that her mother is depreciated at a rate quicker than they are actually telling her. Now, you would be forgiven if you think this is a normal mother-daughter relationship, where the daughter is seeing her mum break at the seams and fray in front of her. This story is anything but Antara ruse her mother for the childhood that she had. Antara will never forgive her mother for leaving her dad. And albeit, yes, they were in a loveless relationship to a child. It's so hard. It's difficult. It's traumatic at times. But Antara wants to move on with life. So she runs to an ashram, a place of spiritual awakening, and takes Antara with her. Both mother and daughter have to give up everything in order to move to the ashram, and they end up having to beg on the streets of Pune, India, in order to know where the next meal is coming from, know what they're going to do the next day. And you'd think that you'd be preoccupied in this, but the mum's only focus is Reza, a disheveled homeless artist who provides her love and affection at a dire time. Now this novel is set between 1981 and 2003. And where we start? Oh Jesus Christ, that's a big spider. Jesus Christ. Okay, it's out the window. Apologies everyone. <laughs> <laughs> So it's worth remembering that we are always in the present. So everything that previously happened is Antara's memory. It brings me on to the first act of genius is that we have this juxtaposition between a mum whose memory is suffering and a daughter whose memory is stable. Memories are never stable. Memories change over time. They have this fluid motion to the witch. And Tara seems to be very preoccupied about, especially as the amyloid fluid in her mum's brain, which is placking up, is the reason why she's struggling to remember. And that begs the question that if Antara recollects an event, I can pinpoint minute small details. Is that more reliable than Antara's memory of it? Antara would be the first one to tell you that her memories are accurate. She has no reason to fabricate, to miss out minute details, but many characters throughout the novel, including her husband Dilip, the mother-in-law, and even Tara tell her that she's got it wrong. But, but how could she be wrong? Everything that's happened in the past has informed the person that she is today, this present moment, the present moment that we are seeing through this book. And this brings us on to this second act of genius, past affecting the present. Let's leave the mother and daughter alone for the moment. Let's focus on Dilip and Tara's 
husband who is a truly exquisite character rather than a pedigree thoroughbred indian dilip is actually american he's american indian coming back over to india to live out the rest of his days and a lot of characters seem to have issue with dilip hasn't got a say in some things because he wasn't born here he doesn't know the culture he doesn't know the history the richness that india has to offer so we have dilip with his americanized brains morals culture what have you is always trying to dig with his hands trying to reach to the roots of where he comes from. Heritage is very much labyrinthine and rather than looking at roots, we're also dealing with rhizomes and what he pulls up from the ground is religion. A religion he knows fairly nothing about and knows maybe a few key aspects of it, which is Jainism. Jains are the strictest of vegetarians and, and Tara doesn't understand why he needs to be vegetarian in order to be himself. And Dilip is in this constant state of flux of if he wants to go through with it. And it seems as though he's trying to rationalise why he wants to do this. And he doesn't actually use his grandparents' heritage for that. Instead, he uses animals. How this novel portrays the poverty and violence of animals on the streets of India is expertly interwoven into everything. It's interesting because you see all these street animals in absolute carnage, but Dilip is more focused on what's on the TV, what's being portrayed, what's being sensationalized to him. And when a lion on TV kills a lioness, that is the moment, that is the epiphany that he decides he's going to go through with being a vegetarian. But should the past inform who you currently are? Maybe? Yes. No. Well, what if you could be unmemorable? So unmemorable that you can erase your own memories, almost fabricate your own story in the present. What if you made up stories, told half-truths, fogged up the windows of the mind so your past will definitely inform the person that you are this present moment? because you created it. What if you made up stories, told half-truths, fogged up the windows of the mind so your past will definitely inform the person that you are this present moment because you created it. And this is the third, the final act of genius, which is able to elevate this entire story to grandness. How do you create and remember a memory? It is a scientific fact that the olfactory sense, yes, that which is smell, is closest to right here where the memory is held and all the smells of India, all the smells of childhood, all that petrichor, the burden petrol, the smell of trying to dig yourself out of a hole, really, really is captivated in bird sugar. How Abhi Doshi deals with smell is spectacular. Every single scent is pinpointed, yet it doesn't feel as though she's throwing everything at you. And what you feel is a fairly unraveled story. As soon as you start to bring in the spool, you'll notice the certain smells start repeated and they focus on certain memories, and they focus on certain events, and someone might have a very slight change, a slight variation of that smell, and it's so close. And when you notice that, this story is going to fissure everything you knew everything that you read about this book. Everything which has a smell shouldn't be viewed as a sole item. View it more as a perfume with high notes, middle notes and low notes. So when we are faced with a curry, yes we smell all of it, but I know she's really able to get down to the exact spices in that garam masala. And where does that spice come from? Is it in a certain region? Who held it? Where did it come from? And we really do have this olfactory experience. Clear, crisp memories bring back berries, fruits, 
florals and the deeper we recess into all characters memories we have the cedar the oak that earthiness that we oh so desire and as we move into key fundamental memories we move into refuge sewage decay what if you made up stories told half truths fogged up the windows of the mind so your past will definitely inform the person that you are this present moment because you created it your memory is going to be very different from someone else's and while you might smell the pus emanating from a street dog whose tail has been bitten off someone might be smelling sweet cloves and coriander cardamom frying on the stove so let us return to antara whose view is the only one we have in this story how does she view herself she's odorless so she has no smell and it's something that she's proud of it is almost as if she's trying to tell us that without a smell you can't remember her she doesn't feel as though her mum remembers her or what she put her through or why she is the person she is today and now we dealt with a question if something doesn't have a smell did it ever happen is aunt tara created her own reality at times is she at the sewing machine tying up those loose ends is antara's memories therefore her life therefore her present existence a uneven patchwork sloppily finished by an untrained eye is antara trying to remember what her mum is forgetting is she remembering everything the way it was this novel is complex and it's rich but really at the heart of it the further that you dig into this novel the more treasure the more that gleams and glints is shown it's surprising because doshi's writing is sparse a by sparse don't think i mean that it lacks detail it really doesn't more so it's able to reflect those inner workings of memory each sentence seems a little bit off balance. It feels a little bit off. With each step that you take in this novel, you'll really draw that fine balance between truth and lie. And when lies are exposed in this novel, you feel lied to. Personally perplexing when it comes to small minor details that therefore inform the major climax of this novel and it feels as though at times each character is saying certain things in order to get their own personal gain from it therefore with every word spoken with every memory harked back to do you remember enough detail to know if they're telling the truth i went into this novel with very low expectations thinking it was going to be another overdone mother daughter relationship and i haven't even touched on a theme of motherhood which is done exquisitely and would be an entire video on its own this book has kept me up this book i just want to talk about this book will win booker 2020 i am putting my cards on the table i cannot think that anything is going to top this book this is a book you should read avni doshi is a author you should be following because if this is her debut <sighs> what's going to come next a 10 out of 10 glorious glorious book i do hope you enjoyed this review and seriously consider picking up a copy of burn sugar and um, no if you're in india this is called girl in white cotton um so just be aware <laughs> now if you're interested in this book you might be interested in what else the booker prize 2020 has to offer therefore if you're interested in reading along please click the discord link in below where you will be taken over to the booker boy book club where we can discuss all things booker Additionally, I would like to mention that if you decide to join the Discord, you will be able to see these reviews 
first as they will be given a private link to view these videos. It's all free, it's just something to give back for joining. Lastly, I want to make you aware that over on Instagram at KD Books, I will be doing a Instagram live where you can ask me more questions, get more thoughts each week on the books that we discuss. If you want to know what's coming next, check the description down below and you will see the entire schedule. That's it. It's 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 10. Do I have to say it again? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Mwah.